So we're going to move on to, to Romag fasteners versus Fossil. Uh, this was a unanimous decision. This was in the trademark arena. And this involved remedies, and in particular, an award of infringer's profits. So I want to tell you a little bit about this case uh, before we get into the decision. This case centered around handbag fasteners. And um, Romag sells a magnetic snap fastener, in particular for leather goods. And Fossil designs, markets, and distributes a wide range of fashion accessories. Now, these two companies had an agreement between them that Fossil could use Romag's fasteners on the Fossil handbags. Then Romag learned that Fossil hired factories in China to create counterfeit fasteners, and Fossil did little to prevent the counterfeit activity. So Romag sued, excuse me, I feel a sneeze coming on, so I'm, I apologize. Romag sued claiming that Fossil infringed its trademark and falsely advertising that the fasteners were Romag fasteners. So if they were fake or counterfeit, they weren't. And a jury agreed that Fossil acted in, quote, callous disregard, but they found no willful trademark infringement. The court said that a trademark defendant's mental state is a highly important consideration in determining whether an award of profits is appropriate, but that district courts have discretion in arriving at a fitting remedy. The place for reconciling the competing and incommensurable policy goals advanced by the parties is before policymakers. That the court's limited role is to read and apply the law those policymakers have ordained. I think Chip hit the nail on the head when he was talking about Gorsuch's uh, policies and starting to see his personality. He doesn't want to give the court any more power than it should have. And I think you see that here. But again, this was a unanimous decision. So what does this mean going forward? And how can you use this case as you're entering into any type of litigation? Well, the Supreme Court did not alter the willfulness requirement. That's the first important thing to know. But it's also important to know that mental state may still be a consideration depending on the facts at hand. The facts we have in this case is that uh, Fossil really did act in callous disregard of the fact that their subcontractors were making knockoff and, and fake goods. So that is a fact we have. The decision, this particular Supreme Court decision, really has a lot of importance because when we are in times like this, whether it's a, it's a global pandemic or whether your particular client is in any sort of financial difficulty, they may be hesitant to enforce their rights. And I think it's important that those of us who are counseling them give them all of their options that they may have the option to disgorge their profits from the defendant. So I think that's also what this case stands for. The other thing that's so critical coming out of this case is full availability trademark searches become much more important as a screening tool. Those of you who practice in this space know that there is no legal duty to conduct a trademark search, but in light of this case, you may want to have evidence that the client is an innocent infringer. So that's a real key learning coming out of Romag v. Fossil. If you're a defense counsel, you may want to emphasize that the mental state is a highly important consideration in persuading any court you're in front of to lessen the award. But if you're a plaintiff's counsel, you want to rely on the court's determination that both damages and disgorgement are available, even in cases where you may have an innocent infringer, because that allows for greater flexibility in calculating damages and may help you get more if you're bringing the case.